to come out and win in our, our seventh race at Wilkesboro, that, you know, that was fantastic. That's what we expected our, ourselves to do. I, I went to a track that I, I didn't run for beans with Bud with that rear steer car, and we went up there and won. You know, so that was that was big for me. To, obviously, big for me for my first cup win, and you know, as it turns out, my only cup win. But to to go there and win uh, with a new team right away, uh, pretty important. So North Wilkesboro, April 1990. People still talk about that race. Now make the case that you did <laughs> win that day, and everybody who thinks you didn't win. She just hush. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and and what you said, they should just hush because it's on film. It's 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 proven uh, because of the TV broadcast that uh, we won the race. Yeah. Uh, so as the race unfolded, we did not qualify well. We qualified back in the twenties, so we we were playing catch up most of the day, and we got ourselves up in position to where we were about. You know, half a lap behind the leader, Dale was leading, dominated that race right. pretty much most of the day. Uh, but we were a half a lap behind him most of the race. You know, it would shake out that way. But you got to remember, back then, lead lap cars would line up in the outside lane. Lap down cars would line up in the inside lane. So if you're fifth on the track, you're tenth in line. Well, you put new tires on the cars that were lapped down and they will race the dog poop out of you trying to stay it to the front well dale would break loose and then the rest of us would have to battle to get by them lap cars and they were good lap cars so so anyways it would always work out to about a half a lap before i would get out of the the mix and so uh come down to we're getting ready to make our last pit stop of the day it's going to come under green and, uh, you know, Larry McReynolds is a pretty smart guy. And he, uh, we had talked about it the night before in our race strategy. One of the plans was we might have to take a chance and pit early to get new tires on because you were making up a second, second and a half a lap. So if you're on a 24-second lap, if you're a half lap down 12 seconds, if you can get them on for 10 laps, you, you're, you've made up all your time. So we pitted early, and we were kind of, you know, I'm going to say, well, I'm not saying we were off the radar screen, but because we were always at half lap down, it didn't look like we were a contender. He was more, Dale and Kurt Shelmerdine were more intrigued with uh, Darrell Walter, you know, and where he was running. So we pitted, and we got about a six-lap head start on these new tires with them. Well, our team cranked off the pit stop of their careers. Absolutely, uh, it was flawless. I mean, absolutely the fastest one we'd ever done, and I'm not so sure at the time wasn't the fastest ever done. And again, that was documented on TV. That's right. I saw that. I had my clock on you guys for some reason, and you pitted early. And I, I just looked at it and I said, "Wait a minute." Yeah. They just pulled off this lightning fast pit stop. Yes, we did. So, so when we came off, when I came off the end of pit road, I'm I'm a lap down because of the way it worked out. A few laps later, I'm hauling ass, man. I'm, I got new tires on and I'm cranking it. And, and we are running some lap times. A few laps later, Dale pits. Well, they show his pit stop. And I think they even had a problem, if I'm not mistaken. I, I might, think they might have stuttered a bit on their pit stop. But it shows when he comes off a of pit road, which dumped into the groove at turn one, I went right by him. So if you think about what just happened, I just passed him for the lead. For the lead or to get back on the lead line? No, no, oh, for, for the, the lead. lead. Okay. Because right. we both made our pit stop, so we had sat on pit road just right. basically yeah. the same yeah. amount of time. So I made up my half lap and was just passing him for the lead. Gotcha. Okay. All right. The next lap. The yellow comes out. Elmo Langley, the pace car driver, uh, you know, God rest his soul, great man. Just he picked up Dale Earnhardt as the leader. Well, so I go around to the back of the field, and at that time the scoring was hand scored. Yeah. And every ten laps, it, your score, you ran ten laps, 
they held your card up so the lead scorer could get a rundown every 10 laps. Very accurate 10 lap rundown. My score is the only one holding the card up. Huh. I was a lap ahead of the field because they didn't pick me up. I'm at the back of the field, one lap ahead of everybody. Who was your score? Do you remember? Uh, no, I do not remember. Okay. Right. Yeah, I don't remember. So Morris Metcalf, he realized we had a problem, and he scienced it all out, as Morris was very capable of doing back then. <laughs> and uh, the pace car waved everybody by, and they lined up behind me, and we restarted the race. And to this day, Darrell Waltrip <laughs> continues, and I know Dale Earnhardt would too, but Darrell Waltrip has got terrible sour grapes over this race for a couple reasons. It was the only year he didn't win a race. That was, ended his streak of not winning races that year. But as I say to Darrell, you had 85 laps to pass me, and you couldn't even keep up. You didn't run second. Dale Earnhardt ran second. Good for you. 